Hi everyone, it's Fanola Howard and we are back in Ireland for our uh, Ask Fanola How episode. And this week we are episode 48 and this is a great question. It's a really interesting question because it's only something I've just started. But here's the question first, okay, which is, I love your podcast, thank you very much. Uh, and I'm thinking about starting mine, what's your advice? What are the pros and cons of having a podcast as one of my marketing levers? Now, marketing levers are something that I talk about with clients and people on my programs quite a lot. And I think of marketing levers as things that actually push you into the next level of your business. It's a, like a milestone, but it's something that actually levers your growth. So it's obviously a question from somebody on one of my programs because it is language I use all the time. And what a great question is, is this a good marketing lever for me to consider? So, so uh, my podcast, which is called Your Truth Shared, has just released its 13th episodes. We're only three months in. So it's still kind of, I'm still very much a newbie at this and really kind of feeling into the medium for my business. But what I can say to you in terms of pros and cons for my business is I really love this as a choice. I say this all the time to my team that I'm really, really enjoying this as a medium. And I think that's a powerful thing to consider when you're looking at building visibility for your business, growing your own brand, and making sure that you are in the right channels to help you grow your business. So choosing a medium that you love to be in is just such a powerful ingredient for success. It's even like, I, I'd say the same about customers. Choosing customers you love also is a very successful ingredient for you. So let's go back to this lever idea and the pros and cons of podcasting. The first thing I kind of want to tell you is uh, that podcasts are exploding. You know this. I mean, before I came on this morning, I said, okay, let's have a look at the latest research on this. And I want to share this with you as a lever, right? A lever idea to help pitch you to the next level. And I'm, remember, I'm always looking to pitch you to the next level. So here we go. 116 million monthly listeners in 2021, and it's still increasing. And also listening time, and it's not just that they're downloading them and not doing anything. Listening time has increased by 31% in the last two years. It's becoming much more the norm. So much so that some of the trends are predicting that the entire internet will effectively become a podcast because we are listening so much. Another interesting trend in this perspective is that there is a question always about whether you do video at the same time. Now, I do video at the same time, but I'm not capturing it. I've got to use a platform that captures the video, but I'm not using it because, I don't know, I'm just kind of in my comfort zone and just focusing on audio first. But you have that option. But the trends are not to worry about the video. That's actually a very interesting trend. So you can come and not be worried about all that stuff of how you look, how comfortable you are and all that. You just have to focus on audio and connecting with your the person you're interviewing or connecting with your content if you're not actually interviewing somebody on your podcast. So the pro is it will widen your reach. It's an emerging uh, channel that is just, uh, you know, when everybody was talking about video, 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 there's a move towards audio, audio, audio now because people want to kind of uh, consume this kind of content when they're walking on the beach, walking the dogs or whatever it is. So it's a beautiful uh, channel to be in or layer to add to your marketing because you're effectively in the earphones, in the ears of your customer. How powerful is that? So that's a major pro. This is a trend in the industry. It's a trend in consumption of content is in the ear. So do consider it if it's a space that your customers are and invariably they are or they are going to be, okay? A con is that like any channel, if you want to perfect a channel and actually be your best in that channel, the con is always going to be the level of investment involved and making the right decisions. And I suppose part of the con is choosing all the different aspects to make sure you get them all right. And I'm going to list a couple for you that are really some tips for you that I've discovered so far. Remember, I'm still early on in this space. So, but what I can share with you so far is a couple of things. 
choose a platform, choose a host platform that fits for you. I chose Kajabi because it's where I do all my courses. And when they released their podcast aspect to the Kajabi learning platform, I just went, this is a no brainer. I can move in the space. I can upload my podcast to a space that I'm really comfortable with. But there are other hosting platforms. You can Google them. There's more emerging all the time. Two obvious ones would be Podbean or Anchor. Google them. You will, and I'll actually list in some of the comments below this um, uh, recording for you now in a few minutes. So, <laughs> so choose a host that you like. Invest in really good sound is really important. Again, it's one of the critical success factors for really good podcasts is making sure that the sound is good. So you're not, you may not always be going into studio. I record mine from home because I work from home now. So I have to be conscious of what's the sound like in the room. So invested in a really good uh, set of headphones, I invested in a Rode mic. The headphones are Audio-Technica, so they're really great. So it captures sound really quickly and really easily and very well. I also invested in an editor because I'm not an expert in sound. And I wanted someone who was really good at sound to do that. It's not cost prohibitive. You can do a deal where you agree the number of episodes, a per episode package, or agree a number of episodes and a flat fee every month. And that editor can do things for you like get three clips for you to release on your social media. They can do the show notes for you. Transcription you can do with something like Otter. So invest in the things that matter. So the things that matter are really good sound, so the equipment you use. The platform that I record in is called Riverside FM and it actually takes the two channels separately. And what I mean by that is when I'm interviewing somebody that takes, it uploads the sound quality of their part of our conversation separately to mine. So if I have a really bad sound that day, everything is not lost. He can work with my, my sound piece separately than my interviewee's sound. And then that's uploaded. So fantastic uh, piece of software there that you, and is not also not cost prohibitive. So good equipment, good mic, good headset so that you're keeping out the sound, using something like Riverside FM to actually upload your sound. But Zencaster is also here as well, which is really powerful. Getting a really a good editor who's going to output stuff, clips that you can use in audiograms to release into your social media. So three clips I do in my package with my editor, three clips, which I release in different channels. So a different clip in each channel, which is also good, keeps your feed fresh and it's not an extra amount of work for you to do. Get the show notes in place, get the transcription, use something like Otter, upload it, release it. That's the technical kind of side of the investment piece, which is, I suppose, the con. But, you know, investment is never a con for a business. So next thing I would say a pro is it's I'm, I decided to release a podcast because my customers were telling me and saying to me, you know, everybody doesn't see all the layers that you have in your business, all the layers that you bring, the, the depth and breadth that you bring to your work. And this podcast was an answer to that feedback that I got from customers. And I really enjoy doing it because I've always loved having these deeper conversations with clients to really get into the depth of their business so that it can really help them extract the uniqueness of their business. And sharing those conversations is so enjoyable for me. I've gotten really positive feedback from the people I've interviewed and that has an impact. And I'm also getting really good in good feedback from people who are listening, which I really, I, I love, you know, and already so fast that it's uh, doing so well so fast. And I think that's because I really sat and considered for quite a while about the space that I wanted to own with the podcast. And that's something I would advise you to think about, because if you can keep it really simple about what you want to achieve with your podcast, and ultimately you're wanting to achieve reach, but keeping it really simple in terms of the reason for it, the type of content you're going to have on it, so that it feels true to you and that it's sustainable, that you actually look forward to doing this recording every time. So think about that. I was sharing deeper conversations about the entrepreneurial journey because it's something I'm really passionate about, because I think it's fundamental to success to be able to know the journey before you take it. 
And this was a sharing this aspect of my brand in a very meaningful way in a channel that has exploding reach and allows me to be the in, in the ears of my customers. Think about it for your business, that's simply too. What's happening? What are you doing or what aspect or layer of how you work can be revealed in a podcast? And that can be really, really powerful. Let me just check if there's anything else. Record ahead, it's this whole idea of batching I tell you about all the time, record ahead. Like, but if you choose something you love, you won't mind doing the recording, you won't mind doing the batching, you won't mind doing the investment. If it feels true to you, it's a great space to be because you can excel at it because it's something you love. Many more pros and cons, but I think really keep it simple. It's a it's channel that's exploding. It's where you can show a layer of yourself that maybe you haven't been able to in other more limiting channels. You are in the ears of your client, your potential client, once you choose content that resonates with them, much like you would do for any uh, content that you release. And really enjoy it. Like really enjoy your marketing and communicating what you have to give to serve your customer. There are my thoughts for you today. I hope you enjoy them and I'll see you next week. This was Ask Finola How, episode 48. Take care of yourselves.